I wanted to talk about AFPAC first. What what um, gave you the impetus to to start this type of thing up? Well, we've been going to CPAC for years now. I went to CPAC in 2018 and 2019. And last year, everybody, I believe everybody who was going to AFPAC has been essentially blacklisted from CPAC. Uh, I've been banned from CPAC. Patrick Casey was banned from CPAC. I don't know about Scott Greer and Michelle Malkin gave a vicious speech last year, totally torched CPAC and Matt Schlapp and the American Conservative Union. <clears throat> and she's going to be our keynote speaker. So we wanted to have a place like CPAC where the real conservatives, real right wing people can organize and hear from speakers and have a good time the same weekend. That's usually when everybody gathers in Washington, D.C. anyway. So we thought, you know, instead of trying to exist on the periphery of CPAC, we should start our own thing where our own people can organize. Now, how is AFPAC going to go exactly? So it's going to be an evening event. It's going to be Friday night. And I can't give away too many information or too much information, too many details about sure. uh, exactly, you know, the time and the location and everything. But it's going to be a dinner event. Michelle Malkin is the keynote speaker. I'll be speaking. Scott Greer will be speaking. Uh, Patrick Casey will be emceeing the event. And so that's going to be dinner. I don't know if we've figured out exactly like the order of everything, but dinner will be there and then we'll have speeches. And I believe there's going to be an after party as well. So it should be a pretty fun Friday night. Suit and tie as well. Classy, a classy event. That's, that's right. A... <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Well, because, you know, we, we've done a couple of events, so, a couple of events so far and they were great events. Don't get me wrong. I mean, we had the Groyper summit and we had an event in Miami, but we really wanted something that was like uh, official and a little bit more classy, a little bit more put together. So I think everybody's going to have a good time. There's also been, you know, you've been in the news recently. You got banned from YouTube. I guess that was that just last week. Uh, it literally yeah, seems yeah, like a probably. year ago. Yeah. Um, so that was last week. I guess you've talked about it on your show already. You've been on other shows, but uh, just for the record here on the kill stream, um, I, I guess just walk us through the, the timeline of that, a timeline of that, excuse me, uh, and give your, give your quick thoughts on that. Yeah, well, uh, it's been a long time coming, obviously, you know, I've been doing my show for three years and I think that we had anticipated that the show was going to get banned for basically since it started, but I got my, you get four strikes, technically you get a warning strike and then you get three strikes. So I got my warning, I think New Year's Eve or the day before New Year's Eve. And I knew from then on, like now that they're starting to flag my videos, it's only a matter of time. It'll probably be imminent. So I got my warning strike around New Year's Eve. I believe it was two weeks later. I got strike number one. Strike number two was last Monday. And I got my whole channel shut down last Friday. So one week ago. Oh, we talked about uh, a certain individual who took credit for it. I, I, I won't even name him, but, you know, people here on the show, you know who I'm talking about. Um, yeah. um, thoughts on that. I actually, I've talked about my thoughts on it as well i i really don't know that uh you know he actually had the stroke to do something like that but i do know he was taking credit for flagging you down and without mentioning him by name what do you think of somebody who's i don't know if you'd call him on the same team i, I think he would reject that but at least um kind of in the same you know um not, not necessarily liked by the mainstream media also a controversial figure um saying that they're flagging people and over, you know, comments on live streams and stuff. What, what do you think about that type of uh, personality, I guess? Uh, well, yeah, on, on that idea, it's just a totally shitty thing to do. I mean, we're all, even people like <laughs> ostensibly like Richard Spencer or Ben Shapiro, maybe not Ben Shapiro, but there's a huge spectrum. The point being, there's a huge spectrum of people that should have solidarity on this issue because we are all facing the same threat. You know, and, and even somebody like Spencer, who it's well known that we have our disagreements and personal issues and so on, even he was able to put things aside and say, I'm against the deplatforming. And he, he said the same thing. You know, our differences are well known, but this is the one thing that we stand together on. And, uh, you know, it's it's one of these things where we are facing such a difficult task. The people that we're against are so numerous and so powerful. And I mean, we are really trying to do something difficult as you know, as me as reactionary, or maybe you, I don't know if you're extremely conservative, or maybe you're just um, against political correctness or SJWs or whatever. Um, it's so hard already. And then that we have people that are constantly dragging each other down. And it's, 
I don't even want to say it's infighting, but it is all this like petty and unproductive fighting. It's one thing if it's e-drama and we had e-drama, you know, he said shit about me. I said shit about him, but then to do this, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to flag your video. Uh, I mean, that is just so low. And that's why I think we are where we are is because people are not man enough to put differences aside and say, we're all going to do our own thing. And at a certain point, even me with the Wignats, we had our moment where I said, uh, I think I said at the first show of the new year last year in 2019, I said, I'm not going to attack Wignats anymore because Wignats are going to do their own thing and they're really not relevant and they're really not even a threat. The real problem is conservative ink. I said, so I'm going to put all that aside and let's just focus on the real enemy. And, um, you know, if people ask me about certain Wignats, you know, I'll say, oh, that guy's dumb or that guy, you know, he's wrong about this or whatever. But, uh, you know, if you watch my show, the main thrust of my show and my efforts for well over a year have been against the real enemy, the real people that like want us dead. And so to see JF as somebody who ostensibly probably agrees on a lot of stuff, for him to see, oh, I'm the threat, I, I'm going to flag Nick instead of somebody else, uh, it's just like, it's just pathetic. But it's, I, so, it's so petty, yeah, I guess, would be my, my thing about it. And it's kind of what you said, like, you know, you talk shit, the other person talks shit, it is what it is. And then it's gone. Like, why, why are you trying to, and then not only, um, you know, affecting someone's possibly affecting someone's, although you seem to have done pretty well, pretty well, <laughs> even on D live, but you know, in theory, uh, affecting someone's livelihood, affecting their career over some, you know, mean words that they said about you that was, pers- that were precipitated by, you know, mean words you had said yourself. Uh, and then to take it into, I'm going to try to get this guy deplatformed and actually bragging about it. Um, I really don't see how anyone can logically support that. Um, but I, I mean, I guess there are a few, but he, he does seem to have hurt himself a, a lot with that. It's just, I don't know. It's, it's just despicable behavior to me. Um, that's, that's my, that's my view on it, but, um, I'll, I'll let you finish up on, on the, uh, on the topic there. Well, and, and here's the thing, which, which to me is so funny, is like, J, well, the, the individual, we're trying not to name, the yeah, individual yeah. in question, <laughs> it's hard. He, he um, you know, the, what's so funny is this is not somebody who I think about, you know, like this is pers- a person who I fundamentally don't care about, you know, and uh, even when he said, oh, I flagged Nick and I was responsible, it's like, no, you weren't, you know, you know what was responsible for it was, well, I happen to know there was a certain high powered guy in Turning Point who did a lot of damage on on this in particular. But it was really like conservative ink. I'm sure it was like left wing people. The idea that I was completely like safe <laughs> and not getting flagged until JF, you know, he went in and did all the flagging is ridiculous, you know. So he's sitting over there mad and furious and, and basically irrelevant, flagging my videos. And I'm like, oh, okay, don't care, whatever. And, uh, you know, you probably didn't even yeah. have the impact that well, you thought you did. Well, that's what I said. So, look, I mean, I don't really think that JF's flagging, you know, was responsible for getting taken off YouTube. That being said, you know, he's out here, you know, saying I flagged all these people and, I, you know, I have to take him at his word. You know, I, I don't I, I believe he probably was flagging people. Um, but, you know, you, you have a lot more <laughs> enemies that are more powerful than JF. Uh, and if you look at your show, you talked about this. You really, Certain I mean, serial plagiarists by chance. <laughs> yes. Huh. Uh, but I mean, your show, I mean, you talk about stuff here or there, but it's, it's mostly, you know, fully political bent. You know, you're going at talking or talking points, USA, turning points, USA, turning point USA. Excuse me. I didn't mean that. Um, and you're talking about political issues, um, you know, pretty much every night. Now our show's a little bit different. You know, we get down in the in the mud with the e drama. That's kind of the the calling card here on the kill stream. But that's really not your thing in the first place. And so, for him to get so bent out of shape about this, it's just, I don't know. It's just startling to me that uh, that anybody could support that. I guess. Yeah. Well, it's it's people that after Groyper Wars have a problem with me. It's very clear that, you know, for whatever reason. There are people out there who just like obsessively hate me, you know, and that's like, I don't know if that's a new phenomenon. People have always, I've always been polarizing, like not just in general, but on the right too, particularly the dissident right. But since Groyper Wars, there is clearly like a concerted effort by like petty people that are obsessed with hating me to spread rumors and lies and flag my shit and whatever. And I think that's just like, 
once you get to a certain level, that's not to like flex or anything, but you know, once you get to a certain level of prominence, you do attract a lot more scrutiny and a lot more, you know, attacks and whatever. So at this point you could log on and see people where their whole timeline is like, I hate Nick, Nick blocked me. Oh, Nick. You know, it's, it's like, it's like, dude, you're more obsessed about me than I am. You know, like (laughs) you care more about me than I care about me. Dude. And yeah, it's not flexing. And I mean, look, especially the last, you know, six months or so, you know about it uh, even more than I do. But yeah, I get, I get that too, where it's like, dude, your whole timeline is about me. You can quote chapter and verse from my show better than I can fucking quote it. And it's just, it's just strange. Like, I don't know. Just go do something else. I don't know. It, it's just, it's just weird. Yeah. Wait, wait for me. I'm going to, I'm going to give it over to the panel here in a minute, but I do want to yeah. ask Nick following up on that. What is the best part of being a uh, internet live streamer, commentator, whatever the fuck you want to call it. And what is the worst part? Hmm. That's a good question. Uh, well, the worst part without a doubt is just the, uh, it's like the the dagger hanging over your head. Like I, I've realized that normal people don't have to worry about at all or have to worry about to a much lesser extent. The fact that at all times, like somebody is trying to destroy you. Like that is easily the worst part that it's like left wing people, haters, Charlie Kirk, like the Mossad, like all these people are constantly monitoring me and, you know, watching if you watch my streams, people are waiting for me to slip up or say something the wrong way. Or, oh, he, he said this the other day on uh, Ryan Dawson. Somebody did a super chat and said, hey, Nick, what did you mean by after your debate with Jacob Wall? You said maybe we could meet halfway on something. And it's like somebody took like throwaway remarks <laughs> and are creating these like conspiracy theories. You know, if you go on 4chan in the hour of the day, you'll find a thread that says, like, oh, Nick, is wor- he's working for Steve Bannon. No, he's being blackmailed by Miley Yiannopoulos. No, he's, he's working for China. No, he's taking money from Iran. You know, so I, I definitely hate the scrutiny that, like, every fucking thing you do or say, people are going to drag you or, you know, whatever. And the best part would probably be that uh, it's almost like you're you're like a protagonist in a movie. Like the best <laughs> part about being a streamer is like if I have a medical problem, I could just like, oh, I you know, complain about something and people are like, oh, it could be X, Y, and Z. Or, you know, if I say, oh, I need this done. I need like, uh, I need a new graphics card. People send me advice or whatever, you know. So it's kind of cool that you have like uh, like an army at your, not at your disposal, but that'll, it is, isn't it? Like, so, too. I mean, there's, it's, you know, it's the gift and the curse, I guess, would be the way to describe it. You know, there's a lot of people who help me on this show. Some of them are even here on the panel as we speak. Um, I have people who just randomly reach out or maybe, you know, maybe I send out a tweet, you know, I'm having a tough time or whatever. And they're like, hey, we're here behind you. Don't worry about it. Or I went through a tough time last summer and they say, hey, you know, we're here, you know, we're with you. Uh, you know, buck up basically. Um, and that's, that's a good feeling. But like you said, I mean, um, it is kind of always being on the knife edge. Now, before I turn, turn it over to Flamenco, cause I can tell he's chomping at the bit, uh, to ask you a question. Um, what do you think of D live? I like D live. I, well, well, I actually have sort of mixed feelings at this point. Like, you know, I, I like D live as the platform, like, some people are so autistic about things. They're like, oh, like th- this doesn't have exactly the feature that I want. This fucking yeah. sucks. You know, I hate when people do that. <laughs> like, I'm not picky. It's got live chat. It's got streaming. It's got donations. Like, it works. It's fine. You know, you deal with it. So I, I actually like that. And I also like that, um, you know, they obviously allow us to stream. So it's so yeah. far, it seems like they're, you know, allowing people to speak. And more that's a pretty big than- thing. That's not, that's not yeah. nothing. Yeah. Yeah, it's huge, right? So, so all in all, I like it, but um, I will say that I'm not, I'm not like loving the fact that, and again, not to flex, but like I'm one of the bigger streamers on this platform, and they just don't even like talk to me. You know, I feel like in any other platform, you would like be in, like it would be more like a uh, collaborative relationship yeah. that you know they would reach out to me and say, well, what, what do you think about the website and blah blah blah, and you know something like that, but. It's like, obviously, since I transferred my show over here, it's like, I'm, you know, the, it would seem appropriate that they would be reaching out to me and, and we would be working together as opposed to I'm in the dark. I don't know if I'll get banned. I don't know how reliable this is going to be. And they, you know, just kind of quiet and dark on me. So 
Yeah, I think that's very fair. And, um, you know, luckily, I, you know, I have a staff guy that I talk to. I don't know if it's the same guy you talk to, but um, that kind of keeps me in the loop. But even him, you know, um, you really don't know what's pissing people off around here or what third <laughs> rail there is. You know what I mean? Um, and especially our types of shows, of course, you know, we get flamboyant sometimes with language or, or whatever, or a topic. Um, and yeah, I, I do think that a little more collaborative, a collaborative effort would be better. Um, but I mean, it is like you said though, I mean, they let us stream here, uh, and that's pretty good, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, so I don't know. It's, it's, it's definitely a work in progress. And I do also agree, like, uh, you know, people say, well, oh, the mobile app is not, you know, I don't have background play and, oh, you know, yeah. freaking out. It's like, dude, I can't, first off, I can't do anything about it. Like Nick just said, they don't call me or ask me about what I think about the app and shit like that. Like I literally can't do anything about it. And I know it could be better. There's no doubt it could be better, but you kind of have to play with the cards you're dealt uh, to a certain right. extent. Uh, now I'll stop talking. I'll give it over to Flamenco because I can just feel him seething right now that I haven't let him. No, not let really speak. seething. I just, <laughs> I'm just uh, fucking with you, dude. Just ask I, your question. I, I just wanted to ask the relevant question around there. Do you think that, uh, like, I guess more people like JF and uh, and, and Spencer Who? are a little bit more angry? Oh, oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> like certain obscure Frenchmen um, who may or may not be sexual predators. Do you think that oh, part of the reason that they're upset is because of money or do you think it's because you've, uh, against all odds, obtained some form of mainstream credibility? Well, first of all, I don't appreciate that you killed me in rust. That's that's the first thing I have to say. Uh, and I, I haven't forgiven you. But um, aside from that, to, to answer the question, I think that, yeah, I mean, it's clear that with uh, these two people you're talking about, it's totally just like, Honestly, it's jealousy. I think that, you know, be, well, it's like a rivalry. And then I think there is a tinge of jealousy, you know, that JF, like, okay, well, I'm, I'm trying, but it's like, Fuck last, it, just year, name him. <laughs> yeah, last year, JF had a huge show or whenever it was that he left the, the Ralph retort or whatever, maybe it was two years ago. It's so hard to, you know, remember all the, the timeline. The autism, but, yeah. When he left the route, or uh, not the Ralph or the Warski Live, Warski yeah. Live. When he left Warski Live, he and started the public space. I remember he was getting like thousands of live viewers, and his videos would go up to you know thirty, forty thousand views. And we all know, I think the backdrop and the elephant in the room is that nobody watches the public space anymore. You tune in on any given night, and he's got like five hundred, six hundred viewers. And I mean, who even watches this show anymore? So. With JF in particular, I think, because there was no reason to provoke hostilities. Like, I've actually been relatively nice to him compared yeah. to how he's been to me and even how other people have been to him. My policy is generally like, if you don't attack me, I'm not going to attack you. And that doesn't mean I'm not going to, like, make fun of you in a tongue-in-cheek way or criticize your ideas. But people would, for a long time, come on my show and super chat and say, what do you think about the Jeffrey Epstein thing? What do you think about the you know, his, his girlfriend has, you know, she's disabled or whatever. And for the longest time I said, you know what? Like, I don't want to talk about that. He's been nice to me. I'm not going to start trouble with him. And then he would pile on every time I had trouble, he would pile on. And at a certain point I said, forget it. This is not a reciprocal relationship. Why would I be nice to you? And so I think the reason that he's so bent out of shape now is it's like, you know, the Groyper Wars, America first have been surging. It's been so popular. And uh, with Richard Spencer, it's obviously a little bit of the same thing. I think, you know, we always had a rival, me, me and Richard, going way back to after Charlottesville even. Yeah, and I, I think you probably hit on something there that JF kind of squandered his momentum. And uh, I think a lot of that's probably due to his personality. <laughs> I mean, we, t we talked about him flagging people and just outright just, I don't know, being a bitch basically. Um, and I, I think he squandered a lot of the stuff um, a lot of the momentum that he had coming out of Worski Live, like you said, when he came out of Worski Live, he was hot. You know, he yeah. he was he was doing great, and you know he he let the ego get the best of him, and you know it can happen. I ain't gonna say I don't have an ego, I do, uh, but uh, you know you can't let it torpedo everything. Kathy Jew, uh, she uh, she self immolated this week, and. Uh, wow. I guess just just your thoughts on that, and I, I I talked with Cassandra, and I've talked with a lot of people. Um, 
what in the world was she thinking with her Twitter activity and her Instagram activity? She cost herself untold thousands of dollars. She cost herself all type of types of business opportunities. And she made it to where, and I, and I said this on air, that uh, even people who want to defend her can't really defend her uh, because she was, you know, posting revenge porn uh, and stuff like that. And even if you don't, you know, agree with it being underage, you think that's not true or whatever, uh, you were still posting uh, pornography and nude images of other people in order to shame them. And you got your account banned. And somebody on Twitter said, oh, well, you know, Ralph, you got that blue check and you got a blue check too. But. Uh, that won't protect you if you start doing shit like that. That will get you kicked off. And just the, I guess, the ego and the audacity to think she could get away with that is kind of crazy to me. Yeah. Well, she was just an idiot. I mean, yes. anybody who does that, <laughs> right? Like, There's like no other way to look at it other than, I, like with my Twitter, people ask me all the time, like, oh, you're verified. I wonder what that would like, like, I'm a fan, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah, I went to Twitter HQ and showed them my badge and they gave me my check mark, you know? Like, no, it's because for years, my approach has always been, you know, I, I know exactly what the rules are. I know exactly what's over the line and what isn't. And if I'm, if I'm even the least bit uncertain, I will simply delete the tweet. If I put something out there and I think a lot of people are going to report it, or I think it might be over the line, I'll wait a couple hours and I'll delete it because it is always with social media no tweet is worth losing the platform. There's no Smart. message you can put out in 240, whatever it is, however many characters, uh, 280, however, whatever it is, nothing is worth not being able to be on Twitter, you know, unmolested by the, the admins. And same with Instagram, same with all that. So you just don't take risks. Like I think that's established and like revenge porn, nudity, that's like, at least on Instagram, I think nudity, but definitely on Twitter, um, it's like the revenge porn aspect. You just don't do that. Even like targeted harassment, especially if you're not verified, you can't post like five tweets tagging the same person <laughs> or can. talking about the same person. I know that, you know, I'm like, so it's just like you're, you're a fucking bonehead if she wanted to be an e-celebrity. So I don't know. You have to wonder, I mean, was it a case of she got carried away? She was so like butthurt or obsessed or she was mad, whatever, you know, she is that big of an idiot. Or do you think she like, for lack of a better word, kamikaze on purpose and she like took herself <laughs> out of the game because she was tired of it because she talked about shutting down her socials before. So maybe it was deliberate. She did. And when they originally, so somebody tagged me and said, oh, Kathy, Kathy Jew's Twitter is down. And I thought, oh, well, you know, she just deactivated. This is a common gambit. You know what I mean? She just deactivated and she's going to come back and say, you know, the vicious alt-right, the, the knickers and all these people were harassing me. Uh, you know, that's what I figured, but I went and checked and she actually got taken down. Basically, she fucked with somebody who, Cassandra, basically, um, who's, you know, she underestimated this person <laughs> and their and their contacts and their reach, uh, and she got <laughs> fucked over pretty much. I I, I guess um, just to finish up the Kathy Kathy thing before I take a couple couple questions from the panel and bring in a couple callers. Um, what do you think um, of her trajectory? I guess uh, from being in Miami and uh, if people remember, I think it was Miami where you guys uh, took the took the photo uh, <laughs> and stuff like that, and she was kind of you know pro Nick Fuentes. She was pro groiper she was soaking up all the attention and you know it was great and then she got um i guess she got pissed off because people were trolling her as always happens uh wanted you to denounce those people denounce uh those types of things and you know all those all those dms came out because she was leaking them and then you just went ahead and put out the full conversation where you said look you know just take it you know this is part of being in the arena this is part of being uh, a commentator and uh, you know me me saying that me denouncing these people only going to make it worse on you first off they're not going to listen and just you know just lay low and do your thing um what do you think about her tra trajectory from from where she went i i don't know so i'm i'm a little mixed up i don't know if she was officially with uh turning point usa but she was basically like adjacent to them is my understanding um, and you know, she went over and was defending you and now we see where she is now. Um, yeah, well, it was a very bad trajectory. You could say that it's like, you know, she, she shouldn't have met me. I, I totally, <laughs> you know, that, that was it. <laughs> she met me and it ruined her life. <laughs> but, uh, but it's true. I mean, you know, part of the thing, like, I don't know if you remember, but when that picture was posted, it, it's, it's also 
funny. <laughs> it is also it is all a comedy to me. Yeah. When that when that picture was taken, everybody flipped out on me. I mean, like Ashley St. Clair got fired from Turning Point, and a lot of people gave Kathy shit. But everybody, like a lot of my people, flipped out, and they were like, "Oh." Nick Fuentes took a picture with E Girls. He took a picture with Kathy and Ashley. Oh, he he's betrayed us. He's fucking Kathy Zhu. And like I knew that taking a picture with these two girls, what like especially with Kathy, I thought either Kathy will become one of us and she'll be based in Red Pill or whatever, or it'll fucking destroy her. You know, like taking a picture with her is like lobbing a human bomb at her and like it'll melt her career or whatever. So I knew full well, like we just have to, I just have to get in there to, you know, associate and then let it play out. I was like gassing her off and saying, oh yeah, you're base. Oh no, you're talk-. <laughs> she's like tweeting about 1350 and all that shit. And and all the groypers are like totally laughing at her from the sidelines. And she like, was going to no, feed you soup job. when you were sick. Remember <laughs> yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Just in my live chat. Like, <laughs> oh, no, this is so cool. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And then she you totally should try this down. bad soup. <laughs> yeah. So, so it was all, it was all, uh, it really is just a really funny storyline. If you followed this for months to just the way (laughs) she went and then she caught a little bit of heat, uh, from people she didn't think she should have caught, caught heat from. And she wigged the fuck out. And then, you know, the bat suit memes, of course, we laughed about it here on this show. I don't know if you have pretty sure you probably have. Um, and Basically, people weren't even directing that at her, and she just completely still spurred the fuck out. Reloaded AK. Oh, wow. He's muted. Jesus. I'm oh, not muted anymore. There he goes. I was, I was attention. Go ahead. All I got to say is there's one lesson we can learn from everything with Catboy Cammy. Never trust a man who's willing to put his mouth on a horse cock. Yeah, well, uh, we got a lot of big stuff coming up. AF Pack is next. Yeah, it's next week, next Friday. So, yeah, it's going to be great to see you, Ralph. And, uh, Whoever else watching is going, it's going to be good to meet a lot of the fans and it's going to be a pretty high powered event. There's a lot of like internet people that are going to be there. So it'll be an event for us. That's what's so exciting is it's, it's not an event for cringe, like, you know, political people, Israel worshipers. It's going to be an event for based gamers. You know, it's going to be based (laughs) epic internet people.